All right, guys, in today's Steam Deck video, there's not gonna be any performance predictions. We're not gonna even talk about any of the technology within the Steam Deck. But today, we're gonna be highlighting one of the biggest components to our channel over the past six months, and we're gonna give it a bit of a facelift. Let's go touch some hardware. Hey guys, Turk here, hope you're having a great one. Like I said, no performance numbers today. We're gonna to be talking strictly Steam Deck and how I came up to my hack and deck solution. Now we've been covering Steam Deck ever since July of 2021, and we've covered the hardware specification, the software, operating system, all sorts of performance stuff. So if y'all are interested in that kind of thing, Definitely recommend y'all check out my Steam Deck uh, playlist here on the channel. I've got a dead link in the description as well as a card at the top right, because if y'all are interested in that sort of information, definitely worth a watch. But today we're gonna be giving my Hacken Deck a good bit of TLC as we go into the February 2022 launch. And we're gonna give it a little bit of a weight reduction because let's be honest guys, this is the computer I've been using for the past six months. This is a uh, NZXT, I think, H1 case. Uh, it's been a pretty good cheap case, about $40 to $50 at uh, Fry's here at Austin, rip. But if I'm gonna be lugging this around up here in my little studio area, it's just way too big, and it's time to give my system a little bit of an update. Now, I mentioned I wanted to make it a bit smaller, and you know, as I don't have to have a GPU in it since it's an APU-based system, what better system to use than a Silverstone ML08? Now, I like this case because it looks kind of like uh, the PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series S had a baby. This system only cost me about 110, 120 bucks off of Newegg, but what I like about it the most is it's gonna be able to fit our mini ITX motherboard up here at the top, plus our SFX power supply. It's either right here or right here. But what I like the most is that on the back side, there's space on it to fit a 130 millimeter GPU. Because guys, I don't only do Steam Deck content here on the channel. I've made some mock-ups for PlayStation 5s, PlayStation 4 Pros, and with the, uh, I think it's the 6500 XT coming here in a couple weeks, I'm planning on also making a Xbox Series S machine. So I wanted to pick a small form factor chassis that could check all of those boxes and fit all the stuff I need. But for today's Steam Deck Hack and Deck video, uh, we're really only gonna be using the mini ITX portion as well as the SFX power supply. So it's a little big for what we need, but I forgot to add this. Uh, one thing that comes with this case is a nice little carry handle. So if I'm gonna be taking this to a LAN party or moving it around the room, uh, it's gonna be pretty easy to lug around. It's significantly lighter than the last case. So I am really excited to see how the build looks with this. Now powering my hack and deck is going to be this EVGA SFX power supply. Let's zoom in since it's so small. If you're not familiar with SFX, it's effectively the same output as an ATX uh, power supply. It's just significantly smaller. And what I like the most about this is it is rated for 750 watts on the 12 volt rail. And uh, you probably saw it earlier, fully modular. And for our Steam Deck, I'm only gonna need to have the 24 pin ATX connector and the CPU connector. So by having it as a modular solution like this, I'm not gonna have a lot of excess cables routing through my system. So this is gonna be an ideal solution for our hack and deck. Now next up for our system and probably the most important is my motherboard. We are gonna be rocking the ASRock B550M ITX AC now, you might think, Turk, this is not an ASUS board or an MSI board, and it's just not gonna be a great choice because those kind of motherboards suck. Well, keep in mind, I'm not running this with the full core configuration or the full graphics condition. I'm actually gonna be underclocking and undervolting several components, so this ASRock board is actually pretty well suited. It doesn't have all the fancy phases like the others, but since I've only got two sticks of RAM at my disposal and I'm gonna be overclocking the snock at, <laughs> the snot out of that, uh, this is gonna be a pretty good solution. As I mentioned earlier, we've got the eight pin power connector here. We do have Wi-Fi here. I'm not sure if it's five or six, but I'll be able to use my Bluetooth uh, controller. And for all my other future projects, we do have access to one PCI by 16 slot. Uh, so if I need to go with an external GPU, that'll work as well. And we have room for one NVMe drive. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing on the back side here, so we can't expand storage that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw in my one terabyte 
uh, team group. I think it's like an MP33. Uh, I'll put a little annotation here on the screen, but it's got adequate read and write speeds. And since it's an NVMe drive, it'll run just fine. Moving on. Now the processor for this is going to be my Ryzen 7 5700G. It's an APU solution that uses both the CPU and GPU on the same module. Now I know it's not exactly the same as that is provided with the Steam Deck, but if you go and look at St uh, Valve's documentation for the Steam Deck and their Hack and Deck solutions, they recommend parts similar to this, but those parts are very underspecced. By going with a desktop module with some of the other components in this build, I'm going to be able to account for some of these performance differences as well as the wattage difference between the parts. And as we saw in several other videos here on the channel, my Steam Deck actually matches a lot of the performance leaks that have been put out on the internet. So take that for what it's worth. The 5700G, it's a pretty decent processor. Uh, moving on to cool this 5700G, we are using the Noctua. Uh, what is this model? Uh, we got the box here, right here. Uh, this is the Noctua NHL9A AM4. This is not the 65 millimeter variant. This is only about 30 to 40 millimeters in height, which is actually really slim, which goes well with our uh, device. So what's best about this is we're not putting out the same wattage as our 5700G and we're actually undervolting and underclocking it. This type of a cooler will perform just as fine as we need. And since it's a downforce cooler, it's gonna be able to provide some cooling to our motherboard circuitry as well as maybe even our NVMe. So this is actually a really good cooler. So the most critical component for our build is gonna be our RAM. And I went ahead and splurged and picked up some Trident Z Royal Elite RAM. This is some pretty high dollar stuff. Uh, I was using some just crude Corsair overclocked to 4400, but the, guys, this stuff is clocked at DDR4 4800CL19. Now we do have to force 1.5 volts into this in order to get to those speeds, but I do not believe that we'll be able to push our 5700G that high but I figured why not get the best RAM that we can afford in order to push our system as hard as we can. Opening up the box, because we got to do a little bit of an unboxing, we got a little microfiber cloth, which is kind of nice. And look at this RAM, it is so nice. Let's take a look at that, a little zoom in action. Ooh, yeah, that's so nice. Now, another reason why I like these is they're not that gaudy gold color of the, some of the other stuff. So this is a really slick kit, it is RGB. So it's gonna look pretty good and it's gonna give us a little bit of a accent glow coming out of our case. I think it's gonna look really slick. So other than that guys, that's all the components that's gonna be going into our 5700G. So now let's kick it into overdrive with a little bit of a time lapse.
All right, guys, it's time to see if our Steam Deck is going to boot and make sure we don't have to tear this all apart and do it all over again. All right, we got fan spin. That's always a good sign. The dims have lit up. That's good. So the next thing is to check if the keyboard or the monitor turns on. The, the mouse is on. The keyboard is on. Yes, I think we're good to go. So now it's time to go through the BIOS and make sure all of our settings from the MSI motherboard that we had in the past, uh, they get applied properly to this ASRock board and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so here we are. We've got our P1.8 version of the BIOS installed and we've got a lot of different settings to change to get it to operate similar to how a Steam Deck will run. So we're gonna head on over to the overclock tweaker and we're gonna change to a manual mode for overclock. Now for the B clock, you usually can set this to auto, but I've found it to be pretty stable if we just set it to 100. Now I do need to change the CPU frequency and voltage because the Steam Deck runs at a maximum of 3,500 megahertz. And since we are running with less cores and less frequency, I am gonna reduce the voltage down to 1.1. As for graphics clock frequency, we are going to set that to 1600 in order to match the Steam Deck, but the core voltage, we're gonna leave that to auto. We'll talk about that in just a second. For the SOC uncore, we do wanna get that to enabled because we do need to manually change the SOC voltage. Now, 1.35 volts is where I landed up to get my extreme overclocks, but if y'all are not comfortable running at this high of a voltage, you should be safe anywhere between 1.15 up to about 1.25. This is not a daily driver machine for me and I am pushing an extreme overclock, so this is worth the risk for my setup. Going into the default XMP settings, we do want to load up the DDR4-4800, but I don't think that my 5700G is going to be able to hit that. So I'm going to dial it down to 4600, but I also want to make sure we check our infinity fabric. What's interesting here is with the ASRock board, if you look over on the right, when you have it set to auto, it actually sets the F clock equal to the M clock, which is exactly what we want. But if you wanted to have some additional warm fuzzies, feel free to change that to, I think it's 2300 megahertz. But I'm not gonna do that for this testing. All right, I, need, I do need to set some additional SOC voltages. Uh, we're gonna change the load line calibration to level two. This will hopefully give us a more stable voltage going into our SOC so we don't hit any noise events that can prevent our running. Also note that this type of RAM runs at a spicy 1.5 volts so your memory kit may be different. Moving over to the advanced tab, we actually need to go in and change the CPU. Just kidding. We need to, just kidding. We need to go down to uh, AMD overclocking real quick and go into the manual CPU overclocking. This is where we're gonna actually disable four of our cores and only run with the four core and eight thread, the same as what's running with the Steam Deck. Now we do not need to go and change the graphics clock or voltage here on the overclocking setting because we've already taken care of it. The last thing we need to check is the AMD CBS and then going into NBIO because with Linux, we actually do need to change a couple different settings for the graphics card to work as, as intended. So graphics card configuration, we do want to run with UMA specified and we want to run with a eight gigabyte frame buffer. The reason for this is with Windows, it, it manages the dynamic scaling of the allocated memory to the GPU just fine. But with Linux, I found that it is not very stable. So I hard code it to eight gigabytes and it works just fine for me. Now that we've gotten all of our BIOS settings to match what we had in our previous setup, it's time to install Manjaro. Head on over to manjaro.org, uh, go down to the little download button and make sure you're picking up the KDE Plasma version. As of this recording, I believe 21.1.2 or 2.1 is the latest version. So load it up with Bellina Etcher onto your USB drive and we'll go ahead and get that installed.
With the operating installed, our resolution set up, it's finally time to go ahead and play some games. Now in the background, I went ahead and installed Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Horizon Zero Dawn, as well as Doom Eternal and Crisis. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason, Crisis is still rated as uh, silver over on ProtonTB.com, so I'm not gonna actually try and get that running on this video. And since I've been doing all sorts of different installations, Doom Eternal is starting to throw some flags for anti-tampering warnings through their Denuvo anti-cheat software, so I'm stuck with going with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So let's kick those off and see how this system performs compared to our previous setup. All right, let's fire up Steam and start off with a little bit of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, according to the Alley 213 performance leaks, this game at 720p and high detail settings is able to hit right at about 36 FPS. Granted, I probably wouldn't run this game at the high detail preset. It'll at least give us a good starting point for just confirming that our Steam Deck setup lines up with what we previously had. 38 FPS, so bumping up our data rate from our original 4400 up to 4600 actually does improve our date, our graphics performance quite a bit. Granted, it's not that big of an improvement, but it is an improvement nonetheless. We are now actually better performing better than the performance leaks, so you guys can take that for what it's worth. Regardless, I think we're good to start a different game. Let's try out Horizon Zero Dawn. All right, going down to settings on Horizon Zero Dawn, scrolling over to display, make sure we're only running at 720p with upscaling turned off. We did talk about Horizon Zero Dawn with FSR. I'll post a link up in the card at the top right in case you're curious how FSR will improve our performance, but looks like we're good to go. We'll go tilt up, pan to the right. Yep, as the end. Nice, another successful benchmark under our belt, and we average right at 42 FPS with uh, the GPU getting a 1% low of 37, while the CPU is rendering at 33 FPS. So, if you are wanting to make sure this game runs at a minimum of 30 FPS, you should be good to go with the original detail preset, as well as 720p. All right, guys, and that's gonna be my Steam Deck setup upgrade. It's been a pleasure building inside of this ML08 from Silverstone. And I'm really pleased to see that our DDR4 4800 memory was able to overclock as fast as it has. And we've actually gotten some sizable gain, well, moderate gains in some of the games we tested. And it's gonna be more applicable to the Steam Deck as it comes out here in February 22. Now, if y'all wanna see more Steam Deck content, definitely let me know down in the comments. Every week I post a thread or a poll over at the community tab, seeing what you guys wanna see this next week. So make sure you let your voices be heard. But thank you everyone for stopping by the channel and Turk Force. Hope y'all have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one.